Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Make a Physics Engine. So here's where we left off last time. Uh, we just finished the polygon intersection testing. So now we can test for intersections between polygons using the separating axis theorem. And uh, let's go ahead and see what that looks like here. Every time they intersect, the outlines turn red. And that looks good right there. And you can see it only intersects with the ones that are correct. Now let's move on to collision resolution for polygons. Okay, so let's go back to the game class here. Okay, here we are in the game class. I think where we need to be now is actually in the collision class. So let's move over here. Okay, here's our intersect polygons method. And just like our intersect circles method, I want to return a normal and a depth value. We're going to use those values to then pull apart the polygons. Now finding the normal and depth value for polygons is a little bit different than finding it for circles. Uh, so first of all, let's just go ahead and make the field. So first we're going to pass out a vector that'll be the normal. And then we're going to pass out a depth value. The normal is going to tell us the direction we need to move to push uh, the second object outside of the first object. And initially I'm just going to make the normal um, zero. Now the depth, I'm going to make that the floating point maximum value. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to start doing some comparisons. I want the smallest depth value that will uh, allow us to move outside of the intersection. And so I'm putting the max value in there right now. So then every other value I find will definitely be lower than that. And we'll, we'll just get the, the lowest value. Eventually we'll get the lowest value. Inside of each loop, what we're doing is we're testing to see if there is separation. Every time this condition is true, every time we've projected the vertices onto an axis and this condition is true, that means that there is separation. It found a gap on this projection. Now, if it doesn't find separation, we need to do something else. And then we're going to come down to this part of the loop, okay? And what we're going to do now is start storing the minimum depth that is found to resolve the collision, all right? Now, let me go back to our image here. So here's the image we had last time. In this image, we were looking for separation. So now I drew another one. I'm going to show you what it looks like when we don't have separation. And one of the things you want to look at, so here's the axis we're projecting on. looks like this, something like that. One of the interesting things is that when we don't have separation, both of the maximums are greater than both of the minimums. And we're going to use that to find out what our depth value is. And so we have this... Um, axis, which is the normal, this is going to become the normal that will resolve the collision as long as this is the minimum depth value. Okay, so first of all, let's find the depth value. Now, the depth value is found by subtracting one of the shape's maximums from the other shape's minimum. And then we do the same thing for the other shape's maximum and then the minimum on the other shape there. If we subtract these values, first of all, we'll do max A from max B. That's going to give us a distance that looks something like this. And then we're going to subtract the other two. So we have max B minus min A, and that will give us a distance that looks like this. So we're going to end up with two different distances. And what we want to do is keep the smallest one. All right. And then once we have this smallest distance, we're going to compare that to, our, to the smallest distance that we're saving to return. And if it's smaller than that, then we'll use that one. So we're just basically breaking this down and just getting the smallest value that we possibly can to resolve the collision. And once we find that smallest value, that will become the, the depth value. And then this will become our normal. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Inside, um, here's our loops where we're testing for separation on the axis. Now, if we get to this point after this if statement, um, then we know that there is overlap, and we want to find out what that overlap is. And so I'm going to make a vector here. I'm going to call this the axis depth. Okay, so on this axis, this is the depth. This is the minimum depth that we have. And so what we want to do is we want to get the uh, minimum of the two values, the two possible depths on this axis. And what we're going to do is just subtract these values. So we have the max B and the min A, so let's subtract those two. Okay, and then the other two is the max A and the min B. So we're going to subtract those. Okay, and once we have, oh, I'm sorry, and this is not a flat vector. This is a floating point value. This is a scalar. It's a, it's a distance that we want there. So now once we have this, this is the minimum depth on the axis. Let's compare this depth, this axis depth, to the depth we're going to return. So if the axis depth is less than that depth we're going to return, then I want to save um, this axis depth as our new depth to return, okay, because it's smaller, and I want to keep the absolute smallest. 
So the depth will now be equal to the axis depth. And then also I want to save this normal. So the normal will be equal to the axis. And that's all there is to it. Uh, from there, that'll give us the absolute smallest. And as long as we put this code, so let me copy this code we just wrote. I'm going to put this down in the second loop as well. Okay, and by the time we're done with this, we're going to end up with a depth and an axis or a normal that will tell us how to move out of the intersection at the smallest possible amount. Okay, now there's actually a little bit more we have to do. First of all, the normal that we're getting or this axis that we're saving as the normal is not in normalized space, meaning it's, its magnitude is not one or it's not guaranteed to be one. It's actually the same length as whatever this edge is. It's just rotated to be perpendicular. And because we're using this axis as our axis of projection, that means our depth values aren't going to be exactly right for how to resolve the collision. Now, one thing we could do is inside this loop, we could normalize the axis just like this. And then if I normalize the axis here, that means all of the other values I get are gonna turn out just right. All of the depth values are gonna be just what I need. The normal is gonna be, or the axis is gonna be normalized. So that'll already be ready to go for a normal as well. But I really want to avoid doing this calculation in this loop. I want to keep this loop as tight as possible uh, because this has a couple divisions and a square root. And so I don't really don't want to do that right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it like this here and find out what the depth value is using this coordinate space. Now, once we get done with the loops, let's calculate the actual depth value. So we get the actual depth value by dividing the depth by the length of the normal. And then once we have that, we, we need to actually normalize the normal because we want the normal to have a magnitude of one. So we'll just use the math library and we're gonna normalize the normal. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I think there's a little bit more we have to do. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. But I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work exactly right. Now, and at, before I run it, I actually know, need to go back to the game class. So here we are in the game class. Let's scroll down here. We need to go to the update function. And here's our collision loop. Okay, and last time we were just passing in the vertices and checking for collision. So now we actually need to pass out the uh, normal and the depth value. All right, and I'm going to put these on their own line just so they're easier to read. Um, let's pass out a vector that's the normal, and then we'll pass out a, a depth value. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to do the same thing we did with our circle collisions. We're just going to move the bodies by uh, the amounts that we provided. And so it's exactly the same code. In fact, no matter what type of collision we're doing, we're going to resolve it pretty much the same way, just like this. Uh, each collision function is going to return a normal and a depth, and then we're going to move it by that normal and depth. Okay, and from last time we talked about this, but each of the bodies is going to move by half of the depth. Okay, so they're going to pull apart like this. And you can see I reversed the sign on the normal, and that's because I want, I want the bodies to move in opposite directions. All right, I want them to move apart from each other. Really, that's probably all we need, except I think there's one more thing. So let's go ahead and run it and just see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the one we can move. And you can see it, it doesn't look exactly right. It's kind of jittery, and sometimes they seem to kind of pass right through each other. And I think what's happening here is that our normal calculation isn't exactly right. In fact, let me stop. So here's the loop where we're doing the rotations. Let me stop them from rotating just so I can get a better idea and make sure what I'm thinking is correct. All right, so let's just go ahead and pick one of these. So if I intersect from this side, it looks just fine. I'm not seeing any problems there. And then if I intersect from this side, it looks fine. And then, but if I come in from this side, it does something strange. And I think from the top, it'll do the same thing. Yeah, every time I come, so anytime I come from the top or the right, it, it doesn't look exactly right. And I think what's happening here is the normals aren't getting returned correctly or the actual normal we're using isn't getting returned correctly. Sometimes it's facing the wrong direction. Let's go back to our collision code and I need to find some way of correcting this so we always get the correct normal. Now, there may be other ways to do this, but I'm kind of just looking at what's the easiest way that I can figure this out. And in my own mind, I'm just going to figure out where the objects are in relation to each other, and then just make sure the normal is facing the same direction that I want it to. And let me go back to my drawing code. So the way that's going to look is, um, if you think about this being the center of A, 
and this being the center of B, I always want the vector to push B out of A. So I want a vector that points from A to B, and then I want a normal that points in the same direction as A to B. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a vector that points from the center of A to the center of B, and then I'm gonna compare the normal and see if the normal's uh, pointing the same direction. If the normal's pointing the same direction, then I know we're good if the normal's correct. Now, if the normal is pointing the opposite direction, then I know I need to reverse it. Let me delete all that. We'll go back to our code. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to, I want to find out what's the center of these objects. And I'm just going to make a function that'll do that. It's going to be private. It's going to be a private static function. And I'm going to return a flat vector that is basically the center. And it's what it's going to be is the arithmetic mean. Okay, so I'm going to take all of the vertices, add them together, and then divide them by the... Uh, total number of vertices, and that should give me a basic mean, arithmetic mean, or the kind of the geometric center, I guess. All I really want is just kind of the center or a generalized center formula. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to call this find arithmetic mean, and then we're just going to pass in the uh, vector of or vector array of vertices that we want to find it for. So let's loop through all the vertices. Um, I actually want to store the sums, and we're going to store the sum of each component. So I'm going to have an x component, the sum of x, and let's just start at zero. Same thing for the y. Okay, inside our loop, let's just grab um, the vector we're currently on in the loop. So that'll be from vertices i. And all we're going to do is increase the components um, by whatever our vector is. Okay, and now that we have that, let's return a new vector with the, it's going to be the sums of each component divided by the total number of vertices. So sum x will be divided by, okay, and then sum y, same thing. Okay, and that should do it. Now that I have that, let's go ahead and put it into our function. Okay, so down here, we're trying to ensure that our normal is pointing the right direction. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple of values. So I'm gonna call this the center of a, and let's find the arithmetic mean. So we'll just pass in vertices a. And let's just do the same thing for B. That'll look like this. Okay, and now that I have that, let me calculate the direction. So this is the direction that I want the normal to face. I want the normal to point from A to B, so I'm gonna make a vector pointing from the center of A to the center of B. And so in order to do that, I just take the center of B and subtract the center of A, and then I'll get the direction I want. And the way this works is it actually makes the center of B relative to the center of A. And when you do that, you get a vector pointing basically from A to B. All right, and now to compare the directions, I just use the dot product. Let's bring in our flat math. If the uh, dot product of the direction and the normal is less than zero, then we're pointing opposite direction. If it's uh, greater than zero, then we're good to go right? It's already in the right direction. And so we're less than zero. Let's go ahead and reverse the normal. So we'll just set normal equal to a negative normal. And then I think we are completely done. That should do it for our collision resolution. Back in our game class, we are moving the bodies by the correct amount and actually changing the outline color as well. Okay, so let's run that and just see what happens. Okay, um, so okay, it looks like it's working. That looks really good. Let's see if we can push a bunch. We'll kind of stack them up here and start pushing them. <laughs> that looks really good. Let's see if I can push this one up here too. <laughs> um, oh, and I should be able to rotate it. Um, yeah, perfect. Kind of go in here like a wedge. So that's it. That's a polygon collision resolution.